grab your fam and grab some tea because it's time for family art making. What's up, Ringling fam? It's Callie, and it is week two on our journey to the Center for Asian Art. Last week, we looked at beautiful blue and white porcelain, and then we made some blue and white designs of our own. And this week, we'll be sticking in a similar realm of those plates and dishes and vessels and moon flasks. We'll be looking at teacups. Well, technically tea bowls. We'll be looking at some tea bowls and other utensils all the way from the 1100s in China and some more modern Japanese tea bowls from 2019. So let's check out some of these tea making utensils from all the way back when in China. The first is a mini ewer. An ewer is a jug with a wide mouth that was used to hold the water. This is a tea caddy with a lid. They were used to store the tea, so we've got things to hold our tea powder and our water. So next, we need something to drink it out of. This one is a cup with a little stand. Do you ever place your teacups on a small dish? This is kind of the same thing. And finally, and most importantly, we have our tea bowl. See how wide the opening is? I wonder if it would be hard to drink out of because it's so wide. Let's be honest, I would probably spill it no matter how wide the opening was. If we take a closer look, this bowl has phoenix patterns on it. The phoenix is an important bird in Chinese culture. It represents harmony, love, peace, and power. Remember that when we do our project later. What designs will you use and what will they represent? Now it's time to look at the more modern examples of Japanese tea bowls. Matcha, the green powdered tea, is still used today in Japanese tea ceremonies known as chenayu. Tea bowls, or chawan in Japanese, are the most important utensils in tea ceremonies. Traditionally, the host of the ceremony will match different utensils together that are specific for that ceremony. So they won't use the same utensils and have the exact same guests together twice. So when presented with a bowl of tea, a guest will notice and reflect upon the warmth of the bowl and the color of the bright green matcha against the clay before they begin to drink. So when you hold it in your hand, it's more than just a cup to drink out of. It's a beautiful piece of art to appreciate and enjoy. This first one is a Yohin Tenmoku tea bowl. Yohin Tenmoku is a style that uses a black glaze and on the inside has bluish purplish spots. As you can see, they kind of look like oil spots. There are only three original intact Yohin Tenmoku tea bowls and they are designated as national treasures by the Japanese government. So this tea bowl mimics that style, but this one was made in 2019. Next, we've got this funky fella. It's embedded with glass. I wonder if that makes it harder to drink out of. Actually, I'm not sure how you drink out of this at all. You might need a straw. <laughs> Sometimes, contemporary artists like to bring their own style into traditional objects, and this is a great example. It might use old techniques, but the design is very new and interesting. The artist Kintaro starts by making his pieces from a flat sheet of porcelain clay and then adds pieces of colored glass. When fired, the melted glass creates these beautiful colors and patterns on the bowl that are kind of subtle and might remind you of how brush strokes of watercolors look on paper. It's just beautiful. We have a few more tea bowls and other tea related items in the Center for Asian Art, so you should stop by and check them all out. And while you're there, skip right across the sidewalk and visit our tea house. Sometimes we do traditional Japanese tea ceremonies in there. Maybe you and I can do one together soon. In your art kits, you have little paper teacups. So we're going to be decorating these, taking inspiration from the tea bowls we've seen today. What do you want the designs on your teacup to represent? What symbols should they have? What colors? When your guests of your tea ceremonies look at your cups, what should they think about? What would they think of you? 
The supplies you need for this project are kind of open-ended, but if you got an art kit, there's a couple special things in your kit that you need specifically for this project. And the first one is the little paper cups. You should have gotten two paper cups, maybe a big one and a small one, two large ones. These are going to be acting as our teacups. If you did not receive an art kit, don't worry. You can use a paper cup that you have at home. You could use a regular cup that your grown-ups don't mind you decorating. You can even make one out of clay, let it dry, and then decorate it. If you make one out of clay, you might want to be careful about using it to actually drink tea out of though. Once you have your teacup or tea bowl squared away, then you just need items to decorate it with. You can use paint, crayons, color pencils, markers, whatever you want to decorate. If you got an art kit, you also got some fun watercolor looking stickers and some gemstones. You can use items like that, pom pom balls, sequins, whatever you have around the house that you could use to decorate your teacups, use it. If it's something that's not already sticky though, remember that you might need to grab some glue. Because this project is so open-ended and you can decorate your teacups however you want, I'm going to kind of zoom through how I made mine. So I'm painting one of the little teacups, starting with some blue waves painting across the bottom because I was thinking about the water being used to make tea, but also because I live near the beach, it seemed like a good design to put on my teacups. And on the top, I did a little line of green to remind me of what I said earlier about the matcha powder and how you would want to look at the contrast between the color of the matcha and the cup you're drinking out of. After that, I just added some little blue and green gemstones around the top and on the handle. Finally, I grabbed those watercolor stickers I was talking about. I tried to pick nature themed ones because that's kind of what tea and drinking tea bowls in the tea ceremony reminded me of was kind of the earth around us and the natural colors. So I picked stickers that match the colors blue and green that I'd already painted on the cup. You can design yours however you want, use whatever colors, designs, anything that you would like. And after you're done, why not make some tea to enjoy with your family? And if you're not much of a tea drinker, maybe grab some juice or some soda that you like and have your own little tea ceremony. Go look up some videos on YouTube that teach you how to do a tea ceremony and just have fun with your teacups. So here's my finished teacup that I made. I would love to see the teacups that you made so if you'd like you can send us a picture of your artwork to the ringling facebook page the family programs facebook page or send us an email at education at ringling.org and if you do let us know that it's okay to share it with the rest of the ringling fam but that's all i have for this week so i will see you next time at the same time and in the same place bye if you're making art along with us for fam this month save your artwork. We are doing another family art exhibition in our community gallery this fall and we will start looking for submissions in July. Everything that you make fits perfectly with our theme which we'll announce soon.